Good morning, Good and morning. welcome to this uh, Sunday worship service, the Ascension of our Lord, uh, is what we're celebrating this morning. Um, but as you know, it is also Memorial Day. We'll take a moment to recognize that as well. It's also Pastor David's birthday, and so uh, we just want to to take a moment and uh, well, and wish you a happy birthday. And, uh, and Pastor David will be praying, so I'm not sure he'll, he'll pray uh, a blessing over himself, but we certainly do. And uh, so remember that uh, as well this day. But we want to also thank Chuck Hill for uh, decorating uh, the, the altar um, this morning. It, um, it is decorated for Memorial Day. And with that in mind, let me... Uh, read this for you. During the Revolutionary War, we lost more than uh, 25,000 freedom seekers who fought for their independence from Great Britain. America lost more than half a million of her own during the Civil War. 525,000 Americans died in World War I and II, while an additional 54,000 and 58,000 brave Americans perished during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Today, we honor these Americans who sacrificed their lives for the freedoms we hold near and dear. So heed President Roosevelt's warning and never forget the brave men and women who died to earn us our privileged American way of life. We will never forget them and we'll never forget their efforts to keep this nation free. So as a grateful nation pays tribute to our brothers and sisters in arms who gave their last full measure for this country, we thank them for their service, hard work, and dedication. And so at this time and during the prayers later in our service, we will uh, just take a brief moment of silence to honor, respect, and thank those who have sacrificed their lives. Those who have gone before us, um, they will be missed, and we, we give our thanks. But we know that a life of sacrifice is not in vain. We see that even today in the life of Christ, who has been exalted, um, even though he sacrificed so much um, for us. And as we consider these things, we begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we begin by singing uh, verses 1, 2, 6, and 7 of a hymn of glory. Let us sing number 157.
Continue with our confession and forgiveness of sins. Heavenly Father, you have foretold the coming of your heavenly king throughout the law and the prophets. We have, we have waited, waited, but are, are still, still in need of your help to see, to see and understand that Christ, Christ is the Messiah. Jesus Christ, your Father, has exalted you to be placed again at his right hand as you reign as king of everything in heaven and on earth. We have, we have received the proclamation of your, of your death and resurrection. resurrection. We, are we are glad, glad to be under your care. Holy Spirit, we wait for your coming on the day of Pentecost. You fulfill Fill God's promises in us. Renew, renew our, our hearts so that, so that they, they might be soft toward you. you. Let's pause for a moment of personal reflection and self-examination. Christ has spoken, and we repent. We repeat it that Jesus uh, it has suffered, died, and been resurrected from the dead. Now we proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins in his name. Therefore, as a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you who do truly repent and believe in Jesus Christ the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father you, you have promised, promised that, that the King, King would lead your people in justice and righteousness. Jesus, Jesus is that King, King full of grace and truth. Remind, remind us to pray in his name. Convinced, convinced that, that we, we will be are, heard because, because he, st he stands at your right hand forever, forever and ever. We, we ask this, that, that your will might would be done here in the church for the, for the sake, sake of Christ Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, God now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Well, again, uh, on this Memorial Day weekend, we... Um, Pray that you take a little time to remember those who have given such a costly, costly um, sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Um, I got a haircut, and it's kind of nice to get a haircut. Uh, Pastor Dan did it earlier. Um, he did it himself, and I luckily had my wife do it, but it's not a good thing when she starts to laugh when she's cutting your hair. But I understand that the difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut is about two weeks. So <laughs> it's all good. Uh, we are going to continue to stream live our, Wednesday, our, our worship services. So our contemporary worship service on Wednesday at 6.15 will be streamed live, as well as our traditional worship service at 8.30 on Sundays and contemporary worship service at 10 o'clock on Sundays. Our Wednesday worship is more interactive. So uh, we're taking uh, topics that you're wondering about in your life, uh, whether it uh, deals with life, faith, Bible, relationships, all those different things, um, we'll be having a conversation with you, and uh, Pastor Dan and I will put together thoughtful responses as we uh, re respond to your questions uh, during this time of continuing uh, social distancing. Uh, don't forget that our television broadcast is still on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, um, and that's on Channel 18 WQOW. Um, we are still safer at home, uh, but uh, the mall doors are open, and so if you would like to stop by, if you would like to pick up uh, devotions, uh, there are devotions that are in 
our, um, our foyer. So you can do that. Um, or you can go online and we have devotions that we've written for every single day of the week. Um, so you can go online and see that either on Facebook or on our website. We want to thank you for all the support that you give to Saving Grace Lutheran Church. The reason why we're able to minister to you is because of your support. And um, if you would like to consider uh, supporting us or if this ministry has been a blessing to you, then uh, you can send in a gift to Saving Grace Lutheran Church at 2124 East Street Center at, uh, in Eau Claire, 54701. Um, we were saddened with, uh, uh, we, we kind of watch uh, if there are any new scams. We want to make sure that nobody is taken by those scams. And uh, some of our staff received emails um, saying that uh, they needed, I was going into a meeting, this is me, Pastor Dave Riggins. I was supposed to be going into a meeting and I couldn't talk to them, but could, could you please respond? So look very closely at those email addresses. I won't, be call, I won't be emailing you and asking you for help. I will always call you personally if any help is needed. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, emails is pastoral.office762 at gmail.com, which was taken down, I understand, as well as churchportal7 at gmail.com, which was taken down. And pastor, pastor, 10100 at gmail.com. So be very skeptical of these things. Um, it's too bad that people want to take advantage of others, and we pray that they will understand that that is wrong. So uh, we do continue with our, our first reading. Our first reading comes to us from um, Acts, the first chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. In the first book, Theophanes, uh, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day that he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the, the apostles whom he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs. Appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God, while Staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but wait there until, uh, for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John, the, John baptized with water, but you will baptize with the Holy Spirit, not many days hence. So when they came uh, together, they asked him, Lord, this, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom? To Israel. And he replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set before his own authority, but I will, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judah and in Samaria and the ends of the earth. And he had said, when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up in a cloud and they took him out of his sight. And while he was going up, they gazed up toward heaven. And suddenly there were two men in white robes that stood by them. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? And Jesus, who had been taken up to heaven, uh, will come in the same way as you saw him going to heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading comes to us from... Ephesians, the first chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. I'm going to have to read it from the screen, so it may look kind of odd, but I will be reading it from up there. I know there's snickering in the background. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And of your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give you thanks as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, 
What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who, are, who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him to be head over all things for the church which is the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have a special piece uh, from Heidi and Beth. We do just want to thank Beth and Heidi for that wonderful piece of special music, especially on this Memorial Day. But let us now sing the gospel acclamation.
Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. There was... Uh, a youngster uh, playing on a, on a park district soccer team. He loved playing. He loved playing soccer. He was, he was in his uniform and he had his shin guards on and his dad said, go get him, Tiger. And the little boy responded, I promise I'm gonna play like I've never played before. And he was actually the goalie uh, on this team and soon after the game started, the, the other team got the ball, and it was, it was clear that they were going to have a, a shot on goal. The ball was, was kicked, but our little goalie, he caught it. But then he, he did something that he's never done before. He held the ball in his hands, and, and he started running down the field, and the rest of the boys on both teams were so surprised by this uh, that they all just watched him run down the field. And when he got to the other team's goal, he threw the soccer ball into the net and shouted, Goal! Just like that. And maybe, maybe Dad should have uh, taken him more seriously when he promised that he would play like he's never played before. You see, something that, that stands out in our gospel reading this morning is the promises that God has made and fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And by the end of our gospel reading, you'll notice that it, it caused the disciples to worship Jesus, who fulfills the promises of God. And the scripture invites us to do the same, to worship Jesus who fulfills the promises of God. So we will recap the gospel story and we'll go into why God had to dig deep and work a while because he wanted to build trust in us. So let's, let's get right to it. Our, our gospel reading uh, is, is the very end of Luke's gospel. These are the final verses in the book. And just before our verses that we read this morning, we find the Easter narrative, uh, the story when, when Jesus rose from the dead and, and the tomb was empty. And then after that, Jesus uh, appeared to those two disciples on the road to Emmaus. You re might remember uh, hearing that scripture just a few weeks ago. And, and right after that, Jesus popped up in the room with his disciples, and they were a little frightened. They, they thought he was a ghost. But he tells them he's not a ghost, and he says, I'll prove it to you. Give me some of that fish y'all are having, and I'll eat it right here. And he ate it. And it's right after this that we read our gospel reading for this morning. And so he keeps uh, speaking to his disciples. He reminds them of what he has been teaching all along. That all of the Old Testament promises uh, had to be fulfilled in him. And he sums up what he means by saying this. The Messiah is to suffer 
and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And he says, you guys and girls all saw it happen, but there's more to come. The promise has had to be fulfilled in me, all of those things about the Messiah. But there are promises from God still waiting to be fulfilled in you. Stay here in Jerusalem until the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so at that point, he led them out of the city gates and he gave them a benediction, a, a blessing. And Jesus was then carried up into heaven to be at God's right hand. And our scripture says that the disciples then worshiped him and they returned to the city. And, you know, those were joyful days for the disciples. And they spent a lot of time in the temple worshiping God. So there's, there's the history that we find in the gospel. And, and we see by the end that the go, uh, of this gospel that the disciples were worshiping Jesus. And so this passage encourages us to worship Jesus, who is the fulfillment of God's promises. And so now let's just look at why God had to dig deep, work a while, because he wants to build trust in us, his children. So God made certain promises to us and, and all of the people of God in the Old Testament. He was going to, to send someone to suffer and die for sin so that life could be brought to those who were dead in their sin. Jesus had to dig deep enough into our lives so that eternal life could take root in the soil of our lives. There was a, there was a young girl uh, who was out planting a tree with her mother one morning. They went out early and, and picked a spot in the yard where, where the tree, uh, you know, could last a while, could, could grow up. There weren't any power lines up above them. And then they got digging. Mom, of course, was doing most of the digging. But uh, that little girl got tuckered out pretty quickly. She asked, isn't the hole deep enough, Mommy? And Mom answered, no, we've, we've got a little more to dig. And the little girl responded with the classic question, why? Because if we don't dig deep enough, the tree's roots won't be in the best place to get the food and water it needs. We want this tree to live for a long time, don't we? Yes, but it sure is a lot of work. God wants us to live for a long time, doesn't he? He does. And so he dug deep in the work that was accomplished in Jesus Christ. He promised that he would come down from heaven to, to take a walk in our shoes and experience suffering and temptation like we do. He promised that not only would he live a life like ours, but he would suffer the worst of what this life has to offer. He was rejected by men, abandoned by friends, left alone to fa face death on a cross. God dug deep into the ground, so deep that Christ died the death of a criminal and was buried in a tomb carved out of rock. God wanted to plant eternal life in his children. So he had to make sure he dug deep enough for the roots to take. Jesus Christ proves that we can never find ourselves in a pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. And when you realize that the love of God, Jesus Christ, has found you wherever you might be hurting, worship Jesus who fulfills the promises of God. Promises of forgiveness, promises of new life, promises of eternal life. 
And so God had to dig deep. But God's also been at work for a while now. God has been working on this history in the Gospels for some time. Jesus says the, the entire Old Testament pointed to his life, death, and, and resurrection. God has been promising and planning for a while. So I, I wonder how many uh, of you have been working on uh, home projects during this safer at home period. You see, growing up, uh, there was always the possibility that we would underestimate the amount of work that was required to, let's say, restain the banisters uh, that ran up along the staircase or, or put in a permanent ceiling in the basement or, or repaint the, the fence outside. It was a lot of work, and often we uh, underestimated how much work it would take. But one summer, it, it took the entire summer uh, to repaint that fence. And of course, it didn't help that none of us really wanted to do it. Uh, <laughs> and so we would do just a little bit day by day, and eventually it got done. God has been working on fulfilling the promises of Jesus Christ since before time began. He's been planning and preparing. And so we can be certain that the whole Old Testament is, is wrapped up in who Jesus is. And now we can worship Jesus who fulfills the Old Testament promises of God. You see, we have been let in on the secret. We, we can see a bit more clearly what God has been up to for thousands and thousands of years. So think about how nice it is to kick back and relax after completing a home project that uh, you've been working on for weeks, maybe months. Put that kind of, of thanksgiving to work in our worship. We have received the, the home project, or rather the, the universe project, that God has been working on for thousands of years. It has been fulfilled in Jesus. It has been accomplished. And so why, why did God take so much time to complete his work in Jesus? You see, God... Uh, had to dig deep. He had to work a while because he wants to build trust in us, his children. God is often working in the world so that people would trust in him. So he, he promises things and then he fulfills them so that he might build trust with his children. This is, uh, this is what's commonly recommended for uh, parents as well. Trust is one of those fundamental building blocks that help children as they grow up. And, and I've seen it in a few different ways. Um, one mom had errands to run in the afternoon and left the children with a babysitter. So she told them, I promise I'll, I'll be back uh, this evening with dinner. It comes 6 p.m. She was home with dinner. Or one, one dad dropped off his kid at school and said, I promise I'll see you right here after school, okay? After school, dad was waiting at the front doors to pick up his kid. Or here's another example. Mom and dad took an, an extended trip, a vacation, just for the two of them and, and left the kids with grandma and grandpa. They said, we promise in a week we'll be back to pick you kids up. And in a week, they were back to pick up their children. Parents build trust with their children by making good and their promises. Our Heavenly Father does the same with us. He said, I'll, I'll send someone to conquer sin, death, and the devil. And so he sent Jesus. He said, I will comfort my people and give them peace. And so he sent us the Prince of Peace himself. 
He said, my home is with my people and they will know me. And so he sent us Emmanuel, God with us. He promised, I will place a king over them and his rule will have no end. So he sent Christ Jesus, the Messiah. He sent us Jesus, the king. God fulfills his promises and he proves that he is trustworthy so that we might trust in him. And so now we can worship Jesus, who is the fulfillment of God's promises. And Jesus still fulfills the promises of God in our lives. And so if you come back next week, then you will see how he does just that by sending the Holy Spirit, the one who was promised uh, to us from both the Father and the Son. Amen and amen. And now uh, let us continue in worship as we sing Jesus Shall Reign, hymn number 530. have heard God's word, now let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus, so that we may never take for granted the promise of eternal life that you've given us through faith in him. Christ has done the work. He's fulfilled the prophecies. 
He is now seated at the right hand of God, and it's there that he intercedes for us, speaking on our behalf, that we may know that we are never alone, that uh, he is always there to give us peace, God with us. He is the Messiah, the King. We ask, Lord, that you would open up our hearts that we may tell others the hope that you've given us in Christ, and we might encourage them as they walk with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are doctors, healthcare professionals, nurses, those treating patients of COVID-19. We also ask that you would lift them up and give them your support and strength and those who are working on a vaccine. We pray that you would be with those who have other illnesses and that you would give them support, especially during this time. Be with Lenora Soplin and Barb Menford, Bobby Staffney and Hal Hogstead, Brian Ortner, Lynn Swartz. Be with Rita McCarty's brother, Henry, and be with Nancy Silty, Margaret Perry, Mike Larson, Elise Orr, Charlotte and Donna Hepner, Angie Gibbs Thomas, John Otto, Tracy Curtis, Cindy McDonald. Be with um, Larry Hollingsworth, uh, son-in-law of Erlen Kreinbrink and Kristen Thorpe, Steve Crandall, Anita Johnson, Annette and uh, Mark Van Osbury. Be with Clara Sarnsdorf and Stanley Albert. Be with uh, Mary Gens and Lois Clausen's grandson, Zachary Sternel. Continue to give them your support and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we uh, remember those who on this Memorial Day weekend uh, who have died with such a costly sacrifice that we may enjoy the freedom that we have today. May we never forget. May we always remember those who have died that, they, um, that the freedom that we have is because they laid themselves on the, on the altar of freedom. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to um, lift them up, that you would be there as a support and, and guide to the families that they left behind. We ask that uh, we might take a moment of silence as we remember those who have fallen. Thank you for all that they have done, and most, most of all, what you have done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are in the armed forces who continue to serve. We ask that you protect and guide them, be with DeAndre Abley, Kelsey Ackerman, Nicholas Webster, Emily Erickson, Sean Dalton, Brandon Swanson, Anna Sackett, Eric Hecox, Jimmy and Alicia Schmidt, Josh Lamb, Austin Yonke, Molly Brown, Tim Dundas, Matthew Hill. May they know that you are always present. May they call upon you when in need. And may they know that you, um, they are never alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you be with those who are chaplains in the Good News in Jail prison ministry as they continue to serve those who are behind bars. May they know the freedom that you give them in Christ. And be with Bishop Marari and Nigeria, Pastor Francois in Haiti and the orphanage there. Be with Pastor Estrada as he continues to minister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For it is into your hands, O Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time we'll sing our sending hymn, which is the Battle Hymn of the Republic, 332.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.